So once you hop down into the cellar, you want to run forward, and you'll see that there are three shadow insects just in this area alone. So this should be plenty easy for you to defeat, uh, just smack them all up. Uh, there's actually some um, you know shiny spots here that you can dig up too to get recovery hearts or uh, rupees. Uh, but it's also important to remember that the Tears of Light themselves they actually heal you, um, so you'll actually recover hearts that way as well. So there's also a statue in here, an odd-looking statue, um, and we'll learn much more about this like way later in the game. It's actually kind of near the end of the game that we'll deal with them. But just like a quick, um, cool little tidbit of information, those guys actually they are owl statues, uh, which is I assume is like a little connection to uh, to Majora's Mask. For those of you who played that game, so that's totally irrelevant. In any case, you want to go to the end of the cellar. There's actually a little area where you can uh, use Minda jumps to get up the rafters and then up through this uh, like little well-looking things that leads to the graveyard. So up here, there are some keys up here. These enemies are, I guess, they're twilit keys. Uh, you haven't really dealt with these very much, other than you probably would have seen them in the um, in the cave that leads to the Farron Woods, uh, if at all. In this area, there is a single um, shadow insect that is in the ground. You're going to have to dig it up, so stand over it and use your senses, and then just go smack it. Uh, once you have defeated it, you want to grab its, uh, its tear of light that it leaves behind. And with that, then we'll, we're done with everything we have to do in this graveyard. And then just another quick uh, tidbit of information. This area, actually, this graveyard looks very similar to the graveyard from Ocarina of Time, which was also connected to Kakariko Village and also right next to Death Mountain. So. I guess that's another connection to that game as well. Um, so now you want to head back to Kakariko Village and you want to head over to this uh, this building straight across and here you'll see there's another one of those shadow Kagoroks or, or twilight Kagoroks anyways. Uh, this should be very easy for you to defeat. Um, you can also use Minas Charge Attack to defeat them as well. That would make them to the point head I believe. This is the general store. This is actually the building that uh, you know Barnes was talking about that the owner was actually killed by the Shadow Beast. Uh, it's pretty different for a Zelda game. You can crawl into this hole in the side. I don't know why there's a hole that leads into the building. Maybe she had a cat or something. So you can head over here. There's uh, you want to climb up top. You want to use your senses, and there is a shadow insect that is in this building. Uh, you want to kill it and collect the um, tear of light that it leaves behind. With that, you just want to hop back down and crawl back through the hole to get out of the building. So once we are back outside, you actually want to head along the wall on your left, and you'll see that it leads to a ramp over here. And there's a, um, a sign here by the hotel management, and they tell you not to go up here, or whatever, they say it's a dead end. And if you've uh, played any of the other Zelda titles, you'd know that whenever they say stuff like that, then it obviously means you're supposed to go there. So then up here there's a sign that says, do not jump across, and since we're good, safe citizens and everything, we're going to do just that. So jump across this dangerous edge here, and you can head across into this doorway here. Now. Um, You'll notice there's actually a ramp that leads up into the Kakariko Spring, the, the hot spring. Uh, but there's nothing you can do up there for now, so I would just ignore it. Uh, head into the inn, and you'll see that there's the dark insect. It is uh, inside the furnace, or the fireplace, rather. So you want to grab the stick that is on the ground, and light it on the torch here, and then use it to light the fireplace. This will cause the dark insect to lead it uh, from the smoke and everything get burned, I guess. And then it will just, like, scurry around the room. So defeat it and collect the tears light that it leaves behind. What's with all these houses having these random sticks inside on the ground, you know? Maybe it was just firewood or something. I don't know, it just seems stupid to me. Why are there sticks? You want to get up and leave this area. And then here you'll see that there are two bulk blends, or, or uh, two shadow bulk blends, rather. And uh, these guys are pretty easy for you to defeat. You can kill them with spin attacks and such. Uh, in this case, you'll see that there's actually a small chest here that has uh, a red rupee in it. So go ahead and open it if you like, if you need some more rupees. Woohoo! With that, you want to go ahead and go to the upper area of this uh, of the inn, and uh, there's a another one of those shadow bulblins up here. This is the third one. It should be plenty easy for you to defeat. Uh, once he's he's defeated, you want to head into the room with all the beds. And it's kind of weird. This inn it just has all the beds all in one area. There's not they're not separated into different rooms. So you want to kill the uh, shadow insect that is up here. Just wait for it to stop uh, being charged up or whatever, and then gather its tier of light and smack it up. Just Decidedly. So with that, you want to go ahead and leave. Uh, we gotta get to leave the way that we came in. So go ahead and head back into the kitchen area, then climb up all the crates and such until we get out to the exit. So once back outside, uh, we're actually going to head to the opposite side of the village, off on the west side. We're going to get one more of the uh, shadow insects right here. And um, 
you want to climb up this little short area of the of the buildings right here. You want to use it to climb up on top of the roof, and then you can run along the roof line, jumping from roof to roof until you get to this little shed area. It has another one of those dilapidated kind of slapped together roof patches of wood, or whatever, so you can fall through it. This will lead you into this little shed area and um, this little storage building, and then you want to push the crate forward. This will make the shadow insect come out. You can kill it and collect its cure light. Uh, once you do that, you want to head over to this cabinet area, and then Minda will, will allow you to use some Minda jumps to get out of here. She'll make sure that you are done with your little errand, and then she'll let you leave. Once you're back outside, you can kill these shadow keys if you uh, want to, the toilet keys. Um, but just make sure while you're doing that that you don't, just, you know, be careful not to fall back into the building because that's kind of lame. Uh, once you've defeated them, you want to just hop on down, and you can, uh, we're going to head into a barn shop, actually, and I'm just going to read this sign just so you can see, uh, you know, he has his own bomb shop sign. You want to head over to this little area right here, there's like this little shed thing, it looks kind of like a dumpster, and um, you want to break through this window here, you can see it's flickering, this is a clue that we need to go through here. So you want to just face towards it and then just dash towards it and jump into it. Uh, this will allow us to get into the building. Uh, there's a little sign up here that says, uh, danger, you know, flammable, lanterns are prohibited, and, um, so you kind of expect things to be flammable, considering this is a bomb shop, there's all these little chemicals and stuff around here. So you want to smack into the cabinet that is nearby, uh, you can just dash into it, and then the, uh, cabinet will fall down, and then it just will reveal the insect that was hiding behind it. Apparently they can squeeze kind of tight. Uh, with that you want to climb on top of the cabinet and use it to get on top of, uh, the area and go out back outside. This will bring you to the roof line of um, Barn Shop and you can actually get to the upper area of Kakariko Village. Um, so right now this is the only way to get up here and uh, once you head up here you'll see that there is an insect that goes into this uh, little shed off on the left and um, there's a sign out front that says danger keep out and it's signed by Barnes. Uh, so this is obviously you know, the bomb shop's shed, I guess. So this is obviously all his supplies and everything. Uh, so you'll see that there is some uh, insects inside this um, furnace or whatever, inside the fireplace, but you can't really get to them. So once again, you're just going to have to light it on fire. There's a stick that is right in front of the fireplace. Uh, so you're going to have to use it to light the, uh, the fire inside the fireplace. So anyways, this will light them, but then they'll all catch on fire, and they'll actually set fire to all the stuff inside this shed. <laughs> kind of funny, uh, Minda actually complains to you and she actually just disappears. She says, I'm not going to stay in here. She actually just probably leaves you behind. So you want to quickly get out of the the, uh, the place so you don't die, because that would be unfortunate. Uh, so once you make it out of here, you'll see a short scene in which the shop, or the shed, or whatever, is actually just explodes. Kind of depressing, and all that's left is the three tiers of light. So Minda will then comment just that there's not really a, an easier way to fight these things and, you know, somebody had to get the, the low blow, I guess, and be sacrificed or whatever, so she's not really surprised that someone's house had to explode, I guess. <laughs> One of the immediate downsides to having this having happened is just that uh, Barnes actually had several different types of bombs, uh, but now that um, now that you've destroyed his entire stock right by destroying his, uh, his storehouse or whatever, is that now he has to, he doesn't have anything in stock, he's going to have to like remake all those bombs, I guess. Uh, almost like reinventing them, so um, we actually won't be able to get any bombs from him for a while. Uh, or even any of the cool types of bombs later on. We have to wait before he can make them, so I guess that works out um, kind of conveniently for the progression of the storyline and everything. Uh, so anyways, you want to continue working your way to the top of the area. You'll find this little, this little building or whatever, and there's got like a hole in the side so you can dig through it, obviously. Uh, once on the inside, you'll see that it's just filled with a bunch of jars, and uh, you can smash up all the jars to get a bunch of rupees and such. Um, but then there's one jar in the corner that you can Z-target, so it obviously has a uh, one of the insects inside it. So kill it and then break away so that you can jump back so that it doesn't zap you with electricity. Uh, after that, you can actually smack into the wall and make the jars fall off the uh, the uh, shelving that is on along the side too. So that's kind of cool. Once you grab that uh, tier of light, we're actually done with all the shadow insects in Kakariko Village. So you want to go ahead and leave here, and next we're going to actually go up Death Mountain. So you want to just head to the left, make a suicide jump off here, and go into this little area on the left. So uh, join me for the next video, and we will start going up Death Mountain.